like to take a moment and talk about social skills and friendship skills. We talk about this a lot in our early childhood programs. We say things like, um, be a good friend or you're a super friend. Let's take a minute and let's really talk about what that means. We have known for a very long time now that relationships, connections, friendships are what give meaning to our life. And here's what we've learned over time. We have learned that there is a very specific skill set there are specific skills that we can learn and we can teach that lead to friendships. And not only lead to friendships, but help people sustain and maintain friendships. One of the first skills that we need in friendships is what we call the play organizer. In preschool, play organizer is the person who gives the ideas. They're that child in your classroom that has it all figured out. They know how the play is gonna go. They know exactly what is gonna happen. I like to talk about my friend Sally. So you have Sally in your class and she's in the housekeeping area. She invites people to come and play. When you get there, she tells you your role. You're the dad, you're the dog, I'm the mom and here's what we're gonna do. And she outlines the play in great detail. We also have children that are coming into our classrooms with what I call different abilities. They learn different, they develop different. These children are typically the children that give no play ideas. We teach these children how to respond, how to follow along with the play. So why am I talking about play organizer? We have done research around this concept of play organizer. And here's what we know, and this is not preschool children, this is all people. All people have what we call a threshold. There is a threshold with giving ideas. So let's say for example, I am best friends with Kathy and everybody knows we're best friends. Kathy calls me and she says, Kelly, you wanna go for coffee? Everybody knows I love coffee. So I say, yes, Kathy. And she says, Kelly, where do you wanna go? And I say, I don't know. So Kathy says, no problem, I'll figure it out. Here's where we'll go. Later that day, Kathy invites me to lunch. And she says, Kelly, would you like to go to lunch? And I say, great, Kathy. And then Kathy says, where do you wanna go? And I say, I don't know. Kathy picks the lunch. Later that day, she says, do you wanna go for a walk? And I say, sure. And she says, where do you wanna go? And I say, I don't care. Are you getting the pattern here? Kathy is giving all of the play ideas. And Kathy is gonna be good with that up until a certain point. There's an actual number put to that. Once Kathy starts hitting that 80%, she is giving 80% of the play ideas 80% of the time and we start pushing over that threshold, Kathy is gonna start thinking, oh my goodness, Kelly is a lot of work. The next day, she might call her friend Jennifer and she might say, hey Jennifer, you wanna go for coffee? Jennifer's gonna say, yeah, there's a new place on Main Street I've been dying to go to. Is it okay if we go there? Kathy is in. When the next day rolls around, Kathy's gonna be calling Jennifer because I have hit that 80% threshold and pushed over it and I am now too much work for Kathy. So this we know is the general progress of play organizer. So let's apply that to our preschool classroom. Let's apply that to Sally. Sally has all the play ideas. She directs the play. Sally is not flexible. She does not want your ideas. And when you try to give your ideas, she finds a new playmate to come in and follow her ideas. If you read any business journals on why people lose their jobs, the number one reason a person loses their job as an adult later in life is because they don't get along with the people they work with. Think about Sally in the future. If she cannot accept a play idea, she is at risk of not being able to keep a job in the future. So teaching her how to accept a play idea is going to be a very important skill for her to learn in preschool. Now think of Johnny. Johnny never gives a play idea. What happened with me and Kathy? When Kathy and I were friends, and I say we're friends because she's moved on to Jennifer now. The issue she had was that I was not contributing. We need to teach Johnny how to give a play idea. If we don't teach him how to give a play idea, we are not setting him up 
to be able to have a friendship and maintain a friendship. And then if we connect that back to where we started, what makes life the best for everyone is our friendships, our connections, our relationships. We need to be thinking about this in preschool. We need to be intentionally teaching all children how to give play ideas and how to accept play ideas. The next skill is sharing. Sharing is that ability to exchange that back and forth. In preschool, it might look like I have a toy and I give you a toy to play with. It might look like you have a toy I'd like to play with, so I ask you for a turn. That sharing, that exchange. As we get older, that sharing doesn't have to be a toy. It can be information. It can be a cup of coffee. The third one is affection. Affection is showing that caring concern for others. The fourth is assist, giving assistance to help out. Now there is one of these four that seems to have a little bit more weight than the others. So let's say there's a group of three friends, Kelly, Kathy, and Jennifer, and we're all good friends and everybody knows we're all good friends. We share with each other, we, we have that back and forth exchange. We both give, we all give play ideas. So let's say we're doing all of these things that support friendship. One day we're out on the playground, we're playing ball and Kathy falls. I have the ball and I do not stop to see if Kathy's okay. I mean, I'm concerned about her, but I'll ask her when I'm done making my shot. So I take my shot. Jennifer stops and says, Kathy, are you okay? Here, let me help you get up. That very next day, and even later that same day, that connection between Jennifer and Kathy is gonna be stronger. That ability to, to show affection, to reach out, to help, that is one of the defining characteristics in friendships. I bring this back to the inclusion world. Let's say you have a child that has a different ability, a child with special needs in a classroom. That child is typically the one who receives help, who receives support. I want you to think very intentionally about making sure that all children in your preschool setting get the opportunity to play both roles. They get to help and they get to receive help. The final thing about friendship skills and creating friendship skills that I wanna talk about is a concept that we call reciprocity and length of reciprocity. Reciprocity is the exchange of information, it's the back and forth. The easiest example that I can think of is this. Let's say I am out on the playground and I see Kathy and I say, hi, Kathy. Kathy turns around, she looks at me and she says, hi, Kelly. That is two exchanges. I said hi, she said hi back. Here's what we know about length of exchanges. Those two exchanges, that back and forth, Kathy and I can do that every day for the rest of our lives. That exchange of two will never be enough for Kathy and I to ever begin to form a friendship. There's a magic number with these exchanges. You have to get to a minimum, a minimum of four exchanges back and forth. I say, hi, Kathy. Kathy says, hi, Kelly. And I say, Kathy, how are you today? I love your pink skirt. Kathy says, Kelly, I am good today. Thank you for noticing my skirt. My mother just bought it for me. So up to four exchanges. Again, if we bring this around to children that might have special needs or different abilities, oftentimes what we're working on in their individualized education plan is just getting them to respond. Just give that one response. That keeps them at an exchange of two, and it does not set them up to where they are even capable of beginning to form a friendship, let alone maintaining or sustaining. If you have children that are not verbal, do not despair. The reciprocity, that back and forth exchange does not have to be verbal. It can be an object. It can be eye contact. The exchange needs to be an exchange. It does not have to be verbal. So when you enter your classrooms and you're thinking about what skills to teach, teach friendship skills to all children and teach it intentionally.